Okay, it's Thursday, September 30th, 2010, and uh, I get to go out with Game and Fish to do some sampling. Game and Fish has to get numbers, check the trout growth, etc., etc., and this is the electroshock boat. They are putting it together right now. Yeah, if you're ready, this is Jeff Williams from Game and Fish, and he's going to give us a quick rundown of what we're doing here and why they do it. Okay, what we'll be doing tonight is part of our uh, annual population sample for the Bull Shoals tailwater. Uh, we've already completed quite a bit of it, uh, as well as the Norfolk tailwater. But we've got to get this section. And the things that, uh, that we're looking for, we basically dip up um, as we go along with the Electro Fisher. We dip up all the trout that we see. Uh, as well as any other game fish. In some areas we see quite a few smallmouth. And that's our basic information for managing the populations. It gives us an idea of relative abundance of the fish, you know, where there are more fish compared to other areas. And really one of the bigger things is a, a size distribution of the population. You know, we, um, we can't look at every fish in the river, so we do a sample, which is, you know, just a, basically a subsample of the population, we do it in a way that we think it's representative of the, uh, representative of the entire population, and we use that to, to help with our management recommendations. And uh, once we collect the fish, we do a run, we'll stop, uh, weigh and measure the fish, and then release the fish back into the water in the area it was taken from. And electrofishing is our primary means of sampling here on, the, on uh, these trout waters, as it is in most other uh, most other trout waters, at least in the south, uh, southeast U.S., as well as a lot of places out west. So here's our electrofisher boat, and electrofishing is basically putting an electrical current into the water, which temporarily stuns the fish uh, and uh, immobilizes them and allows us to dip them up and put them into our live well. And... Um, uh, there's different configurations, but uh, basically we have to have a generator here in the back of the boat uh, to generate the electrical current uh, there in the back of the boat. And that's a uh, uh, 5 watt uh, uh, generator. And then uh, the, the electricity coming from there actually goes to our, we call it the brain box. Uh, there's certain uh, ways we want to set up the electrical field in the water, mainly to try to, to be effective in our sampling and also to reduce injury, especially since we're talking about trout. Um, so the, the, the current go, basically goes through from the generator through the brain box, and then um, as we set it up, it goes out and uh, is, is uh, transferred through wires and goes out to the front. These are the... Uh, anodes right here in the front of the boat, these booms with, uh, it's basically uh, cable, wire cable, uh, steel cable droppers. Uh, the current basically initiates there and is, of course you have to, have to have something to complete the circuit. So we have the cathode, which are basically these droppers along the boat. This is a fiberglass uh, river boat, so we have to have those external uh, droppers to complete the field. If you use a a, an aluminum hull boat, uh, you don't have to have those droppers because basically the hull uh, acts as the cathode, as, as, as weird as that sounds. Um, and so uh, while we're sampling fish, and we'll have the generator going, the box will be set up, and then we'll have one netter up here on the front, and they have a safety switch, a safety pedal that they have to depress because we can have the generator running, but it won't put any current into the water until there's actually a safety switch on the box as well, but a secondary safety switch here on the, the floor, and that's actually called a, known as a dead man switch. That way, if for some reason we were to hit something and the netter was thrown from the boat, the current would come off. That way they're not shocking themselves. So as soon as that's released, uh, the, uh, the field is cut off. So we'll go through there and uh, collect the fish and then place them in a live well back here. If we have aerated. Uh, it's not got any water in it now, but we'll get that set up before we collect fish. Uh, and it's got a constant supply of water going in there once we start collecting fish to keep them, um, you know, to, to help them to revive. And, and they actually come out of it quite quickly. And the key with setting up the box, 
at least in terms of, uh, and it may be difficult to see, there's quite a few settings on the box, but at least with what we're using and, and some of the reasons why, uh, we use a pulsed DC current. Uh, it basically takes the current from the, the generator, turns it into a, it's a direct current, but it has a pulse to it. In other words, it's not constant, and that's been found to be best uh, in, in helping to reduce the injury to, to trout and salmon. And, and I guess the reason that trout and salmon are so susceptible to injury or mortality through electrofishing um, is because they have more vertebrae uh, compared to, say, a warm water species like uh, oh, uh, walleye or even bass. Uh, and so with that more, uh, the, the additional vertebrae, um, you can break their backs. I mean, it, 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 it can happen if you don't uh, control your settings. Pulse DC has found to be the, the least harmful. Uh, we also, one of the probably the keys uh, with trout and salmon are, is the frequency of your, your field. And uh, we set it, uh, uh, that's basically the pulses per second of the field. And we set it at, uh, at 30 pulses per second which again, um, quite a bit of literature and study on it, uh, that, that 30 or less in terms of pulses per second has found to be uh, to greatly reduce uh, the, uh, the incidence of injury or mortality to trout. Now, the other side is, <coughs> excuse me, with our settings, the way we, we uh, set them, we're, we're, we're basically set them as low as possible and still being able to sample effectively, but by reducing it, that, that low, we also reduce the injury, the potential injury for, for fish uh, uh, to the trout. Now, once the, the field is set up and it goes out through the cathodes, it basically creates a field, I'd say, around eight feet uh, to, the, to either side of the boat and to the front, out in front of the booms, and it'll also go down at, at uh, roughly eight feet. And uh, we, uh, we, we, of course, in deeper water, we don't sample as well just because they, they get too deep. And that's why generally we try to sample at low water and, and in the shallower areas. And why, do you, and why do you sample at night? Some people want to know that. That's a very good question. Uh, although it uh, would be much nicer to be able to sample during the day uh, and not have to come out here at, at night as often. Uh, because of the clarity of the water, uh, the trout will run from you and uh you know we've actually tried it in, in instances where we had to maybe get a get a few fish for a display or for our health <clears> assessments <throat> and uh maybe not get the flows that we want uh we we went out during the day and it was just it's just not very effective because of the water clarity i think there's a lot of rumors that go around about this is a very destructive process and i'd like you to share with me um you say just the other night you handled like 400 fish and only had maybe one. Yeah, we sampled. Uh, we're, we're, this is our heavy field sampling time uh, around the September October time frame. Of course, we try not to be in certain areas uh, during the spawning period. Okay, Jeff, what were you saying? Right now, I'm going to check the conductivity of the water, uh, which is basically just a measure of how well. The, uh, gives us an indication of how well the, the current will carry in the water. Um, tailwaters by nature, in other words, those, uh, the river portion below a dam is generally low in conductivity uh, just because a lot of the, the stuff that would be in the water that would, would actually help carry the current settle out in the, uh, in the uh, reservoir before, you know, before the water is released. But right now we're at about uh, 324 micro siemens and that's the the measure of conductivity which is actually pretty good uh, up closer to the dam right below bull shoals dam we're probably at about 125 which is uh, uh, better conductivity than some of our waters but still fairly low compared to down here so 324 and, and about uh, 18 degrees celsius but at that 324 we should be able to to, to uh, sample the fish pretty well uh, with our settings and really no need to adjust the settings whatsoever. Good. So right now we're going to get ready and fire up the, uh, the uh, generator. generator and then we'll do a, a quick test of our field to make sure our settings are right. We'll be outside of our sample area and then we'll start working downstream and, and getting some, sampling some fish. Sounds good.
a floating fish. I've seen every one of them up close. They've been suckers, not a single brown trout. Okay, now for the next step, which is recording. Your length. just pulled over to the banks so we don't have to worry about drifting down the river and once these fish have been measured they're gonna be carefully revived and we'll be good to go and man there is a big honking fish in there at some point we will see it Now sometimes they get a few carp and that's what was just thrown out there. Oh my god, that's a pretty fish in there. I mean look at its look at its back. Holy moly. Nice. Nice, nice. You'll see it in a minute, guys. Am I in your way at all here? No, you should be alright. Yep. Okay, good. good. And we usually work, well, we, we do work up the larger fish first and just minimize the time that we're, that we have them in the live well. Right. <clears throat> now, did you say you put anesthesia in the live well? Yeah, it's a, it's a clove oil. Clove and, oil, okay. Yeah. And it, it smells really great, <laughs> but but what it does is uh, it basically calms them down, just like if you were to go and have some kind of procedure done uh, at the doctor or even uh, you know uh, at the dentist. Uh, it it uh, kind of numbs it, but but for this purpose, it basically takes you know reduces the stress. They're calmer, and so as we handle them, uh, they're not fighting us, right? And uh, and so we can get them measured and and get them. Uh, get them back in the water so you'll see some of them now if compared to what you were looking at yeah they're calming down they're start, and they'll start to list on their side it's basically they're they're getting kind of high in a way and we'll work them up and then uh, well, let's let that one get good and doped up maybe there. he's not happy enough yet yeah. <laughs> he's still wanting to fight 688 77 1134 we're measuring in millimeters and weighing in grams okay so if it sounds kind of weird <laughs> that was about a what a 18 inch brown did yeah. you just let go yeah yeah 442 778 For reference, people watching the video, the tray is approximately 12 inches long. 524. The length, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice fish, fat fish. <laughs> 